the Sacramento Kings shocked the league last season, going from 12th in the West in 2022 to 3rd last year. It was the end of a 17-year playoff drought for Sacramento, and they took the reigning champion Warriors to 7 games before ultimately going down. It was a fun season, headlined by the Kings lighting a beam into the sky after every win, which got them the nickname The Beam Team. Their surprising season was led by their all-star pick and roll duo, the Fox and the Ox. All-star and clutch player of the year De'Aaron Fox ran the point, while all-star and the light version of Nikola Jokic, Damanis Sabonis, ran the center spot. It was Sabonis' first full season on the team, and the now three-time all-star was clearly a huge factor in their improvement. They can also thank coach of the year Mike Brown, who was also in his first season, as well as rookie Keegan Murray, who broke the record for most threes ever made by a first-year player. But despite their success and great story, many have been out to discredit it, claiming they were only the third seed because they had luck with injuries, meaning they didn't really have any of them. On top of that, when you see people predicting the West for this season, most don't have Sacramento in the top half. Now they're out to prove that they weren't a one-year wonder. They've added two players this offseason, wing Chris Duarte from the Pacers, and last year's EuroLeague MVP Sasha Vazenkov, while keeping the core intact. With last year's starters, the two newcomers, as well as Malik Monk, Davion Mitchell, and Trey Lyles, the team now has a really impressive top 10 that they can use throughout the regular season and the playoffs. The Sacramento Kings are going to be even better this season. Now let's take a deeper look at why. Before we get into year 2 of the Beam Team, if you enjoy my content or watch a few videos of mine, think about subscribing. 96% of my viewers are actually not subscribed, so if you've watched me before and enjoy the content, drop a sub and comment down below, it really helps the channel. The Sacramento Kings win total for this season on FanDuel is set at 44.5 games, despite them winning 48 just last season. Those are only the 8th best odds in the Western Conference. They finished 3rd last year. It's a massive sign of disrespect towards the Kings, and they're not getting any credit for what they did last year. And it's not just Vegas. The Hoop Collective released a podcast today talking about teams that could shock and make the playoffs, and teams that could drop out of the playoffs altogether. And they labeled the Kings as one of the likely bust teams. But they're not alone. It's been happening all offseason, all over the internet. So what could explain this? Did all the teams that jumped them from last season to this year's win totals get dramatically better? Let's run through a few of them. The Nuggets and Grizzlies were ahead of them last season, so that's somewhat fair, but Grizzlies star John Morant is set to miss 25 games at least. The Suns added Bradley Beal to give them a legit big three of stars, that one feels fair. The Lakers added to their group that made the Western Conference Finals last season, okay. But the Warriors absolutely did not improve. I'm sorry, but 38-year-old Chris Paul is not an upgrade over Jordan Poole, and Dante DiVincenzo left for nothing. The Clippers are listed as higher, despite Kawhi having an off-season surgery and potentially missing the start of the year. Their two best players are always injured and they lost Eric Gordon this summer. And the Mavs are set at the same win total, despite the team absolutely falling apart after last year's trade deadline and missing the play-in tournament altogether. So if you want to say that the Nuggets, Suns, and Lakers are better, that's fine. But realistically, the Kings should be predicted as the fourth best team in the West next season at absolute worst, but I think they could finish higher. But that depends on the players, so let's take a look at the impact guys for Sacramento. When talking about the Kings, I think we should start with the reigning clutch player of the year, De'Aaron Fox. He's been with the Kings for 6 years now, and has been the best player practically since his arrival. However, for a lot of his career, people thought he might be an empty stats player that couldn't contribute to winning. But he proved that wrong last season, as he had the best year of his career and the Kings won all the time. He averaged 25 points, 6 assists, and 4 rebounds per game. He was also very efficient, shooting 51% from the field. It was an absolute breakout season for him, as he made his first All-Star game, was third team All-NBA, and won Clutch Player of the Year. At age 25, he should continue to get better and improve this season. Then we should shift to Damanis Sabonis, the transcendent offensive big man who took Sacramento to another level upon his arrival. He may have been even more crucial to their success than Fox was. 
He made his third All-Star team last season, as well as making third team All-NBA. He averaged 19 points, 12 rebounds, and 7 assists on 62-37-74 shooting splits. His dribble handoffs and passing get other players easy looks and help to generate their high-scoring offense. He's also just 27 years old and hitting the beginning of his prime. Keegan Murray broke the record for most threes by a rookie last season, and after averaging 35 points per game in this year's summer league, he looks primed for a larger role offensively. Last year, he averaged 12 points and 5 rebounds per game, while shooting an elite 41% from three. Some fans were mad when they took him over Jaden Ivey at number 4 overall in last year's draft, but it looks like a fantastic selection in hindsight. He fits perfectly onto this team. I could see him averaging close to 20 points per game this season. Shooting guard Kevin Herter had his best season yet in his first one with the Kings last season. Playing alongside Sabonis and getting dribble handoffs from him led to a lot of open looks from three, and he took advantage. He averaged a career-high 15 points per game, three rebounds and three assists, while shooting 40% from three. He's still just 25 years old and likely hasn't hit the best we could see from him yet. With him, Keegan, and Barnes, the team has a really great spacing and makes it even easier for Fox to attack the rim. Offseason addition Sasha Vazenkov could be the most underrated addition of the offseason. He won the EuroLeague MVP last season and is a dominant offensive player. In 40 EuroLeague games in 2023, he averaged 18 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists per contest, with ridiculous 66-38-88 shooting splits. The three-year, $20 million deal he signed could be an absolute steal. Standing at 6'9 and being an elite shooter, he could be the team's next Peja Stojakovic. Then there are some other key contributors. Harrison Barnes is a steady presence on both ends of the floor and consistently gives you about 15 points and 5 rebounds per game. He'll likely be a starter to start the year. Malik Monk was a monster in the playoffs last year and can still score in bunches. He was a great six man and should continue to be a great contributor off the bench. Offseason addition Chris Duarte should be an immediate contributor and just another guy who can space the floor. Finally, Davion Mitchell will continue to clamp up the other team's best guards and wings. The Kings are stacked with young, improving talent. They have one of the best coaches in the league, and they will continue to build on the chemistry they began last season thanks to retaining their core. The Sacramento Kings are being doubted right now, but they'll be even better this season. They're not a one-year wonder. Thanks for watching. I'm Herm. Have a good one.